This is Charudas coming to you live from Spanish Fork, Utah. This is actually the program which is meant to substitute for the Salt Lake City Saturday evening program at 7 o'clock. But uh, I didn't make it up to Salt Lake City this week. It's a 100-mile round trip. So we're broadcasting from uh, we're broadcasting from Spanish Fork, Utah. Omaginatimarandasyaganaganasanakayatakswarumiditamyanatasmaisigurvedamha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dino Bandu Jigat Pate Gopi Shagavika Kantara Kantana Mostate. Thanks for joining us this Saturday night. <clears throat> Our talk is entitled Testing in Tough Times. And when you're in tough times, this is good to remind yourself that this is not how your story ends. The loneliness, the bad break, the anxiety, that's not what God created you for. That's not your destiny. Better is coming. Greater joy, greater strength, greater relationships. That setback in your finances, that client you lost, the unfair childhood, none of that has the power to stop your purpose. Greater opportunities are coming, greater blessings, greater favor, greater influence. Here's a life lesson. Setbacks offer the greatest opportunity for spiritual growth. When we've been through a time of testing, it gives us confidence that we can handle the next test that comes along. The painter John Sargent once painted a panel of roses that was highly praised by critics. It was a small picture, but it approached perfection. He was offered a high price for it time and time and time again. However, he refused to sell it. He considered it was his best work and he was very proud of it. And why did he hold on to it? It was so that whenever he was deeply discouraged and doubtful of his abilities as an artist, he would look at it and remind himself, hey, I painted that. And then his confidence and ability would come back to him. The enemy Maya will whisper in your ear, you don't have what it takes. Maybe you had it once, but now it's gone. Maya's trying to set you back, make you doubt your God-given abilities cause you to step back from your destiny. And when you hear that voice, it's very important to recall your history. Go over all the times when the Lord has snatched you from the jaws of defeat and brought you to victory. When you have a history like that with the Lord, you will not cower from new challenges, but you'll rush to meet them with excitement and anticipation. When you're in doubt, keep this phrase in your spirit. Greater is coming. Krishna didn't bring you this far to leave you. He wouldn't allow anything if it was going to keep you from your destiny. Remember what he says. He gives us some afflictions which are temporary and relatively light. But after that moment, they are going to work in us an eternal weight of glory. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The trouble is temporary, but the glory is permanent. The key is not to stay focused on the suffering. Don't dwell on the doubts. Stay focused on the glory that's coming. Sure, it's going to be tough now. Life may have dealt you an unfair hand. That suffering, however, is not in vain. It serves a purpose. It's leading you to greater honor, greater favor, greater victories. I love the attitude of Mars Yudhisthira and his brothers, the Pandavas. He said, Krishna, you've allowed us to suffer much hardship. Now, this is the point at which most people would have a pity party and cry boo-hoo. Yudhisthira could have stopped there and wallowed in all of his bad breaks, reviewed all of the problems, and all of the enemies that had come up against him. He could have said, Krishna, it doesn't seem fair. We always keep you first place. What do we do to deserve this? I don't understand it. How do we get cheated at dice? Why is King Duryodhana trying to kill us? Why do we have to go into exile? 
He didn't say any of that. In essence, he said, Krishna, I know that myself and my brothers have had a lot of bad breaks. We've gone through a lot of suffering, but I also know that you're going to restore me to greater honor than we had before. Instead of complaining, he was thanking Krishna for greater right in the middle of the difficulty. And when you're in tough times, you can do two things. You can either talk about how big the problem is, or you can talk about how big your Krishna is. And if you're going to see the greater in the future, you have to do like Yudhisthira. In the middle of difficulty, start declaring greater is coming. The difficulty is a sign that I'm on the threshold. I'm close to something. The medical report doesn't look good while you're taking the chemo. Lord, thank you that greater is coming. Health restoration is coming. Thank you that the number of my days in purpose and in your divine service you will fulfill. When you're fighting depression, anxiety, fear, don't sit around thinking about how you're never going to get better. The middle of that tribulation is the opportunity to declare, Krishna, thank you that greater joy is coming. Thank you that even now you're pushing back the forces of darkness. Your attitude in the suffering is going to determine whether you come out greater or whether you stay stuck where you are. Maitreya, the great sage, consoled Mars Yudhisthira during his exile. This is what Maitreya said. As far as your brothers are concerned, you're virtuous and you have been brought into this world only to fulfill God or Krishna's purposes. You are great devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, and thus you cannot be affected by karmic reactions. You're in the palm of his hand. Your apparent setback will ultimately lead to your everlasting fame and happiness. You will be glorified throughout the history of men, and at the end of your lives, you'll attain the highest abode and go back to home. Back to God. Now, we're not saying tonight that if you have faith, you'll never see suffering. We're not saying that you'll never have things that you don't understand. But we are saying, keep the right perspective. The suffering is not permanent. After you have suffered a little while, not your whole life, not the next 20 years, don't believe those lies that what you're going through is never going to change. The lie that you'll always struggle with the addiction, that you'll always have to deal with that illness. The lie that you'll always have politics at work. No, the suffering's not going to last. It didn't come to stay, it came to pass. And what Krishna started in your life, he's going to finish. But here's the key to see the greater. You have to go through the suffering. I'd love to tell you that greater comes by just being positive, by just staying in faith. But there are certain levels that you can reach only by going through trials and tribulations. Prabhupada wrote in 1972 to one of his disciples, Guru Das. He was living in a piece of land in Vrindavan, our holy version of Bethlehem, which had been donated, but it was extremely raw land wasn't near the town of Vrindavan. It was out in the jungles, not very desirable at the time. It was a rough area. There were wild animals. There were robbers and thieves. There were snakes, scorpions, swarms of mosquitoes. Being out there living in a tent in the most humble of circumstances, imagine an American who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, putting up with all, all the inconveniences out there and getting materials and labor and at the same time pushing on the construction of the temple, it would have been extremely difficult and challenging even for a hardened uh, Indian devotee, what to speak of a lily white westerner who had only been in India for his first time. <laughs> Prabhupada wrote to Guru Das, now go on and develop this Vrindavan center with full enthusiasm and do not be discouraged by any temporary setbacks. Always work in the spirit of being completely dependent upon Krishna for everything. I shall be returning to India in October. 
important thing is don't get stuck in the suffering. Don't live bitter because you seem to have gotten trapped in the jungle over your head with an impossible task. Don't settle in the depression thinking that you've been sidelines. Keep an attitude of faith and go through it. Keep believing. When every thought tells you it's never going to change, keep talking like it's going to happen when there's no sign of it improving. Keep speaking Krishna's favor when it seems like you're wasting your time. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The suffering is a test. The suffering is an opportunity to show Krishna that you're not going to get discouraged. You're not going to give up on your God-centered dreams. You're not going to lose your passion for putting the Lord first place. Now that center was ultimately open in 1974. I happened to be there at the time. Today it is one of the two or three most popular of the 5,000 temples in Vrindavan. And aside from year-round tourists from all over the world, every November during Kartik, more than 7,000 Hare Krishnas from Russia, China, South America, Europe, congregate and celebrate there for the entire month. It is said, after you've suffered a little while, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, will personally restore you, personally strengthen you, and personally establish you. Krishna has called you to live a life of victory. He's called you to overcome every obstacle. The creator of the universe chose you before you could choose him. The forces that are trying to stop you are no match for Krishna, who has already called you. Prabhupada said, Krishna does not like his sincere devotees to suffer or to become frustrated or depressed. He will not stand by idly in any such case. So do not fear on that account. Krishna has got some plan for you. And very soon he will provide everything to your heart's desire. Now do like Yudhisthira in the middle of this pandemic. Go through the suffering with a good attitude. If you keep the right perspective, Krishna will personally restore you. That means he won't send the demigods. He won't ask Indra to do it or Ganesh or Chandra. He will personally come himself to turn things around for you. He will personally heal personally promote, personally deliver you. Now, many of you have already passed a number of tests, been doing the right thing, suffering with a smile, praising through the pain, worshiping instead of worrying. Get ready. Greater is coming. In your life, Krishna is about to do a new thing. Problems that looked permanent are going to turn around. Dreams that looked too far gone are going to come to pass. The right people, divine connections are going to find you. In other words, greater is coming. The enemy Maya thought she was pulling you back to keep you there. She didn't realize like a bow and arrow, the more that she pulls the string of the bow back, the further the arrow is going to fly and with more force and velocity and altitude once she releases it. Maya thought she was hindering you, but the truth is she was propelling you explosively forward. She was helping you. That suffering was a setup. Krishna allowed it so he could launch you to a new level of your destiny. Now, don't be discouraged, rather be encouraged by what you're going through. You could not become who you were created to be without the struggle without the disappointment, without the brokenness. I know it's uncomfortable. I know you don't like it, but keep reminding yourself, greater is coming. <laughs> Many years ago, an architect planned that the walls of the royal palace in Tehran, Iran, be covered with sheets of beautiful mirrors from Paris. But when the shipment of glass, glass arrived, from Paris, every mirror had been smashed to smithereens en route. 
The entire shipment was destroyed. It seemed like the grand entry could not be completed. And just as the workmen started gathering up the broken pieces to discard them, the architect said, wait a minute, I've got an idea. He took a hammer and he broke some of the larger pieces into smaller pieces, gathered them up in his hands, and he walked over to the entry. He put some glue on the wall and stuck the tiny pieces in a collage. Did this several times until he had an enormous montage of broken mirror pieces. At no point were the mirrors broken alike and at no point was the angle exact. And today, the Royal Palace in Tehran is a dazzlingly brilliant display of prisms reflecting light in millions and millions of ways. One visitor stood in awe and described the result like this, quote, broken in order to be more beautiful. When you understand this principle, that setback is a setup for Krishna to take you further. That suffering is putting you in position for greater honor. Then you're not going to lose it and fall apart when you have a bad break. You won't live bitter because you had an unexpected challenge. You will stay in faith knowing that the enemy would not be trying so hard to stop you if she didn't know that something amazing was real close up ahead in your future. I heard about a guy, as described by Larry Olson, in a book called Outdoor Survival Skills. According to Olson, this guy had been out of food and water for days. He was in the desert. His lips were parched and bleeding. His tongue was swollen. His legs were bruised and his feet were raw. He was scraped from the rocks and the blowing sand that had scoured his back and arms. His insect bitten, tormented by cactus needles. His skin was blistered by the merciless sun. And as he crawled over a little rise and propped himself up on one bleeding elbow, he looked across miles and miles and miles of further burning wasteland. He said to himself, you know, Lord, a few more days like this and I could possibly get discouraged. <laughs> what was he doing? He certainly wasn't complaining. He was thanking God and he was that he was still alive, that he was still on the move. He had a good attitude. He knew how to laugh at his predicament right in the midst of all of his troubles. And sometimes it's true, you won't find people around you to encourage you. Your friends are busy. Priests went back to India. Your church is closed because of the virus. You can't find me on Facebook Live. All that's Krishna letting you know that you have to learn the art of encouraging yourself. You have to be able to dig down deep and say, I'm not going to let this bad break, this pandemic, this disappointment, this setback in my finances, this injustice, steal my joy and sour my life. Krishna, thank you that you are bigger than this sickness, greater than this depression, more powerful than this opposition. I know that you being for me is more than the whole world coming against me. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. In times of challenge, stir up your praise, stir up your faith, start speaking victory over your life, start thanking Krishna that he's fighting your battles, that this too shall pass, that greater is coming. I love this story about a businessman who was in a strange city. He had an appointment late in the day. But in the meantime, he had a little time to kill. So he drove around town in his rental car. He passed a Little League baseball game, he decided to stop and watch it for a while. He was standing just outside the third base line. And when there was a little lull in the action, he asked the boy playing third base, what's the score? The boy said, we're behind 18 to nothing. The man said, that's strange. You don't look discouraged. The boy said, why should we be? We haven't come to bat yet. Sometimes the enemy celebrates too soon. He's up to 18 to nothing in the first inning. He doesn't realize, yes, you're down, but you're not out. You had a setback, but it was really setting you up. 
he thought because of his 18 to nothing lead that you would defeat yourself, get all sour, discouraged, sit down on the sand and cry. He thought that setback would cause you to sit in the ashes, defeated and depressed. He's never dreaming that you're going to encourage yourselves. He's never dreaming that when you got knocked down, you'd bounce back up again. He never dreamed that instead of complaining, that you would start praising. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Your enemy may be celebrating now, uh, but don't worry. The celebration is premature. Your time is coming right now. Krishna is arranging things in your favor, lining up the breaks that you need, pushing back forces of darkness. Things are happening that you can't see. If you'll just keep moving forward in faith, you're going to come into unusual favor, breakthroughs, healing, victories, things that you couldn't make happen on your own. When we understand who we are under God, when we surrender ourselves to his love for us, and we start to trust in his providence. There's healing, there's restoration against all the odds. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Such healing took place in the life of the actress Betty Hutton. One night years ago, Ms. Hutton joined the cast of the Broadway production of the musical Annie in New York City. Immediately prior to this time, Miss Hutton had experienced a spiritual awakening and was making a comeback after many years of failure, family breakdown, bankruptcy, and a bout with alcoholism. The program notes for Annie that night at the Alvin Theater contained uh, extensive biographical sketches about all the other members of the cast, all except Betty Hutton. Her biographical information consisted only of five words, but those words spoke to the hearts of everyone in the audience. And when Betty finally appeared on stage, the theater burst into a joyful applause and everyone stood to their feet in respect. No one minded that the production was held up for several minutes as she stood in the spotlight, her eyes glistening with tears. You're wondering what were those five words that Betty Hutton had written on the program I'm back thanks to God. You may feel like you've lost some things. That loved one didn't make it. Seems like when they left, they took a part of you along with them. You don't seem to have the joy that you used to have. You're struggling with an addiction that you've had it for so long, you've given up the desire to get clean. But Krishna is going to do for you what he's done for many other people of faith. One day you're going to say, nothing is missing. I got my dreams back. I got my health back. I got my children back. I got my joy back. And Lord Krishna is not going to bring you out partially where you get back most of what you lost. Krishna doesn't do things halfway. He's going to bring you all the way back. Nothing is going to be missing. It was a great victory when after 13 years of exile and the Kurukshetra War, King Yudhisthira got everything back. But Krishna didn't just give him back what he lost. Krishna brought him out with much greater than he had before his enemies came against him. Did you know there's a reward for going through difficulties with a good attitude? Of course, we'd be grateful if Krishna just brought us back to where we had been. But when you go through challenges with an attitude of faith, with your head held high, knowing that Krishna is fighting your battles, then a reward is coming. You're not going to just come out you're going to come out better than you were before. You're going to collect handsome interest on the tears that you shed. We all have unfair things happen. People and circumstances come against us. Rejection, betrayals, sickness. It's tempting to get discouraged. Krishna, why did this happen? Why did these people push me out? 
Why did the pandemic occur? Why was my daughter born with this illness? Some things, we have to be honest, we're just never going to understand. Don't try to figure out all the whys of life. That's just going to frustrate you. The good news is Krishna knows how to work all things for your good. Initially, it may not be good, but Krishna knows how to turn it around for good in the end. The key is to go through the suffering with the right attitude, knowing that greater is coming. It may not happen on your timetable, but Krishna is faithful. He sees you doing the right thing when the wrong thing is happening. Being the bigger person, taking the higher road, overlooking the insults. He sees you being your best at work when you're being passed over and not getting any of the credit. Can I tell you, your time is coming. You're going to see the hand of God take you to where you can't go on your own. The people that try to push you down, don't worry. Krishna is preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. That means they will gnash their teeth seeing you promoted, seeing you honored. They'll be so green with envy seeing you in a position of influence. You've been through the suffering. Now get ready. Greater is coming. Greater health, greater victories, greater breakthroughs, greater freedom. Victor Hugo opposed Napoleon III. And he was exiled from his beloved France for 18 years, from 1852 to 1870. During his exile, he lived in the Channel Islands. Experience broke his heart. He was filled with sorrow. Every evening, just at the time of sunset, he would climb a cliff overlooking a small harbor and look broodingly over the water towards his homeland. And then, putting aside his meditation, he would stoop and pick up a small rock. and He would throw that rock out into the water. That was a simple ritual that he practiced pretty much every evening. There were children who watched him do this day after day. And one day, one of the children grew bold and asked Victor Hugo, why do you come here to throw these stones? And Victor Hugo smiled and answered the child gravely, not stones, my child, not stones. I'm throwing self-pity into the sea. What was he telling? That even when people dishonor you, even when people exile you, even when people send you to the sidelines, don't despair, don't complain, don't have a pity party. If you keep the right attitude, that setback is a setup for a comeback. Krishna knows how to cause you to shine. People may try to discount you and push you down, but you're not who people say you are. You're who Krishna says you are. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Krishna calls you a masterpiece. He calls you eternal. He calls you luminous. He calls you fearfully and wonderfully made. He indicates that you have royal blood flowing in your veins, that he has crowned you with his favor. And yes, there will be times you have to suffer in exile. There will be times when you have to do the right thing when it's not fair. When you have to work hard, not getting the credit, be good to someone that's not being good to you. But know this, Krishna's keeping the records. When you suffer much, you have a promise that greater honor is coming. Those that discount you now, one day they'll look up to you. Those that don't now give you the time of day, one day they'll wait in line for your attention. Lord Krishna knows exactly how to pay you back. And when it's difficult, keep this phrase in your spirit. The best is yet to come. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The challenge is not there to stop you, it's to promote you. You may have lost some things in the past. You think that it could never happen now. It's too far gone. You have too many enemies. You're too old. The odds are against you. That's thinking in the natural. We serve a supernatural God. He can take you from the back to the front, from the bottom to the top. 
In fact, the more hopeless the situation seems, the more people have written you off, the more likely he is to show his power by turning things around in your favor. Yes, he will bring darkness, but it will be followed by the dawn. He'll bring ashes, but beauty will come next. Now, we have to do our part, honor the Supreme Yogeshwara, honor the Supreme Mystic, get excited, get ready. The best is yet to come. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It's a new day. Things are shifting in your favor. Krishna is saying to you tonight what he said to you this year. You're going to get everything back. Your health is coming, your dreams are coming, your children, your finances, your joy, all the desires of your heart are coming fully and abundantly. Nothing is going to be missing in this life and in the next life, you'll go back to home, back to God. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much for being with us. This is our official Saturday night program for Salt Lake City. I didn't make it up to Salt Lake City. Uh, tonight it's a 100 mile round trip and I don't always do it, but I was here through Zoom and on Facebook Live. Hope that you got some consolation, some inspiration from our talk. We'll be back tomorrow at 11 o'clock with the members of the Salt Lake City congregation, also on Zoom for our weekly Sangha. You're welcome to join as well. I'll post the meeting ID in the uh, password. We have the Krishna Light Show at 1 o'clock Mountain Daylight Time every Sunday. And then another motivational talk this time uh, tomorrow evening, uh, really based out of Spanish Fork here. So thank you very much. And until we meet again, don't forget to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare.